Hey everyone, it's Kate. And July is still Let's Get Physical Month at the Confident Stitch. And so today I'm gonna to talk about making the Cora leggings from Jali. These are the bike short version, but I also made the leggings. And it looks really hard because it's color blocked. It's got this curved seam. It has a pocket, back pocket. It's got a gusset, but they're really pretty easy. There are four parts that I found mildly challenging. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to do the gusset and the pocket. And on Saturday, I'll be back and show you how to do that curved um, rear end seam and the waistband. Jolly patterns are great because they come in 27 different sizes. Can you see this? Okay, kind of. Uh, I'll put it in. They come in 27 different sizes from a little kid size two up to adult size 22. But it can be a little challenging because all the pattern pieces and all the sizes and all the instructions are on a giant piece of really sturdy paper. So sometimes people, i.e. me, find it challenging to, find, to follow the instructions because they're kind of all over the place. But Jolie lets you download a PDF of the instructions from their website. So whatever pattern you're using, you can just download it and everything is on a regular letter size piece of paper. So I'm gonna go over to the overhead and show you about color blocking. Hello from Kentucky, says Brenda. Hi, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So here are the instructions that I printed out. And the first thing you wanna do is Decide how you want to color block if you want to color block. So the instructions show how to um, color block with three colors. You can also use two or four. Um, and it also shows you how to cut out if you're just using one color. So first decide which pattern pieces you want to be which color and then you'll just cut it out. Uh, I always say to cut out knits on a single layer, but I ended up cutting this project out on the fold because our um, our athletic knits tend not to cur curl at the edges. And so I felt comfortable folding it and cutting out that way. Um, so, and the other advice I have for cutting out is make sure to cut out every notch. There are a lot of notches in this project and they're all super helpful. I mean, you should always cut out every notch, but really do it for this project. And then an another important thing, when uh, we're gonna do the gusset first, and this is where we're gonna apply the gusset. This is actually the back crotch seam um, and piece D. It has a special gusset placement mark and you do wanna mark that on both, um, both of your crotch seams. Oh, sorry, hopefully. Uh, <gasps> uh, sorry about that, we forgot to turn it on. Um, do not disturb. But, so anyway, you wanna make sure to mark your gusset placement mark. And also, if you're using a fabric like this that is pretty much the same on both sides, you should mark the, wrong side so that you don't make two right legs because mm -hmm. that would be easy. All right, so let's get going with the gusset. So you're gonna use the pieces D and E. Piece E is the gusset, piece D is the inner leg seam, the inner leg piece. And I'm gonna, oh, you know what? I forgot one last thing I wanna talk about how Jali suggests sewing with knits on a domestic machine. Um, they say to do a wide zigzag right along the edge. Right along the edge, you're gonna do a wide zigzag. It's gonna zig on and zag off and don't stretch. And then you wanna sew a straight stitch at the quarter inch mark, which is the seam allowance. 
and stretch a tiny bit while you're sewing the straight stitch and you'll create a nice stretchy seam that won't break. I actually use a really like a 3.5 millimeter straight stitch when I sew on knits. I use a longer stitch and it seems to be a little stretchier. Okay, so we're back to our pieces D, this is D, and then piece E, which is the gusset. And I have the right side of piece D facing up and the gusset, this is the white is the wrong side. Um, the blue is the right side. And the first thing you wanna do is match up the notches and put the gusset right sides together with one side of the inner leg seam. And the super pointy edge of the gusset kind of goes up the crotch seam. And then this shorter edge is going to be um, near the inner leg. The pictures in the instructions show this really well. So don't worry about it. So I'm going to go over to the machine and sew this with at a quarter inch with a straight stitch. I'm not going to do the um, zigzag stitches on camera, but if I was really sewing this, I would zigzag first and then do my straight stitches. Um, I have, you might not, you've not seen this machine before because this is my super fancy machine from home that changes the um, press, presser foot pressure and has a dual feed mechanism and I find that both of those things are super helpful when you're sewing knits. You do want to reduce the presser, the pressure that your presser foot is placing on the fabric when you're sewing with knits. All right. All right. So I did that quarter inch seam. And now just on piece D, the leg piece of the first side. Um, can you see this? Okay. I'm going to clip on the gusset placement mark right to my stitches. And then I can turn, oh, maybe, there we go. I want it. I think I went a little, I don't think, I think I went a little too far. Sorry. I don't think it's said to just sew to the gusset placement mark, but so you're going to kind of turn the gusset up like this. And I'm not going to fuss with it, but usually I can, oh, there we go. We can kind of turn the gusset placement mark that way. So I have this right side up. And then checking, so this is the wrong side of my other side, so I don't want that. Right sides together. I'm going to line up the second half of the back crotch seam, lining up the um, notches and the gusset placement marks. And this other notch up here. And I'm going to head over, back over to the machine and sew this seam. So here it is from the other side and from this side. I'm actually going to sew it from this side. Oh, we just lost it. Okay. So I'm going to, um, okay, I'm going to sew it so that I can see the gusset. Um, I have in the past sewn and actually missed the gusset. So here we, I'm going to head over to the machine and sew it. Allow, right? Oh, oh yeah, don't allow. Okay. We're having... Can you guys, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. 
So here we are back at the machine. And I'm just sewing at the quarter inch. And I am going to stretch a tiny bit as I sew because this is a straight stitch on a knit. So I just, it's, you know, you just, you don't need to stretch too much. Just a, give it a little bit of bounciness. And once again, I have, I have it situated so that, do I? Oh no, I, I did it the wrong way, but. Oh, no, I didn't. There we go. I have it situated so that I can see the gusset so that I'm sure to catch it. Here we go. I'm going to turn. There we go. I can going past the gusset placement mark. And in the gusset area, you don't actually need to stretch it. It can be pretty, um, pretty unstretchy and solid. And there we go. So I'm gonna head back over to the overhead. And there is the gusset. Um, they do suggest top stitching it. You can use a straight stitch and top stitch it in place so it's nice and solid, but it really, it really isn't that hard if you just make sure that you're oriented, that your right side's together, that it's going in the right direction. And the, the, the Jolly instructions have really good pictures. So there's the gusset. And now we're going to do the pocket. So the pocket comes in two different pieces. There's the pocket, piece G, and the pocket bottom layer, piece something else. Hmm. I, I think it's H, but, oh, F, sorry, F and G. So I'm gonna show you how they're, they fit together before I put the elastic on. So there's the bottom layer, and then here is the pocket itself. And they're gonna fit together just like that. But first you're gonna sew some elastic to this. It's a really pretty uh, subtle little curve um, right here at the top of the pocket. So you're not sewing the elastic to this, um, big curve that has notches. It's the unnotched small curve. And in the instructions, it tells you how long of an elastic to cut. And for every size, adult size, you cut five inches. Um, and it's a 3 8 inch elastic. You'll use the same type of elastic for the waistband. And I'm using swimsuit elastic, but I think any um, 3 8 inch elastic would work. So the first step is to pin the elastic to the wrong side of the, this curve in the pocket. And you want, you want the elastic to stick out over the top a tiny bit. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec. Do I get the pinning done? Okay, so this is the wrong side. And then on the right side, you can see that the elastic is peeking up over the edge. So I'm gonna sew from the right side, I'm gonna zigzag it on right on the edge, um, kind of zigging, zigging on and zagging off. So I'm gonna head back over to the machine going to select my uh, zigzag and the, I made it a pretty wide zigzag. So it's um, four and a half millimeters wide and two millimeters long. 
And you, you know, before, before I sew with any knit for sure, I do a ton of experimenting here. I'm going to get start, started with different stitch lengths and widths and different needles. I have um, a stretch needle in here, but different knits like different needles. It's just, just the way it is. So um, I always do a ton of experimenting. Um, I'm not stretching the elastic at this point. I'm just zigzagging it on. Hopefully. There we go. And I'm not worried about back stitching because I'm going to be top stitching it in place. So I'm going to go back over the overhead. So after you zigzag it on, you're going to turn it again toward the wrong side and make a little curviness for the top of the pocket. And um, it kind of just goes that way, but I do pin. Pin it in place and I'm going to top stitch it down from the top. And I find that it likes to come unfolded right here at the very edges. So I'm going to add a couple of pin, extra more pins than I would naturally just to make sure that it's a nice little curve there. So, and it's fine for the, you want the elastic to be overhanging the edges. You'll trim it later. So here we go, back to the machine. And the elastic is pretty thick, so I can feel that I'm catching it with my top stitching. So I will back stitch at this stage. Um, it'll be sewn into the rest into the waistband, but still. Just honoring the curve. Um, sewing these zig, sewing a zigzag always reminds me of when I was growing up, all the cool kids on swim team, their moms made their swimsuits. And my mom, she sewed, but she did not make me my swimsuit. And all the cool girls had all these great zigzag swimsuits. I was always jealous. And so this makes me, makes me feel cool. All right, let's go back to the overhead and... So we have our nice little pocket with the elastic. So you're, you can put your cell phone in there, a couple extra bucks. And I'm gonna trim the elastic just right against the edge. And now we're gonna top stitch the pocket to the what are they, the pocket bottom layer. So now that you've sewn um, this curve, the pocket's a little bit smaller than the bottom layer, but just up here. So you do wanna match all the edges as best you can. And pin. Um, I, a lot of times I, I like to not pin as, you know, because I'm lazy, but um, this project, I really, I really did pin a lot. There's a lot of notches. There's a lot of curves. There's a lot of things that you want to match up. And I think that some responsible pinning is a good idea. I'm using our, we have some silk, glass head pins and then these are fine pins that 
work really well with knits. I know that there are ballpoint pins that are special for knits, but I haven't been able to actually find them to get them in stock. So I find that the silk pins work really well. So now we're ready to base these two together and then they'll be nice and stable when you sew them to the rest of the leggings. So let's go back to the machine. I'm gonna go, I'm back on my straight stitch, my 3.5 millimeter straight stitch. Um, it just works better. And I'm not even gonna stretch while I sew this. Um, partly because I want it to be a little stable and partly because I'm actually going to be a little bit outside the seam allowance. So probably when I finally sew this to the rest of the leggings, <clears throat> um, you're going to be able to see these basting stitches because when I'm sewing with the knits, I really like the whole foot to be on the both fabrics um it just goes much better especially with my dual feed um everything just <clears throat> flows a little better and so you'll probably be able to see these stitches after i sew the rest of the leggings and i'll just um grab my se seam ripper and pull them out <clears throat> after i sew the seam but you're just getting these together so they're nice and stable and you don't have to fuss with them when you sew the curved back seam or anything. Needle down, pivot at these big corners. And almost done. Yeah, if you just, I really was able to make a pair, my first pair of these in an afternoon. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was going to take a really long time, but just one step at a time. The notches are super helpful. The instructions are great. Um, so I'll go back over to the overhead. And so I have my pocket and pocket bottom layer ready to sew into the rest of the leggings. So I'll be back, I'll be back on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time, and I'm gonna show you how to do the waistband and that curved um, back seam that makes these so fun and color blocked and 80s. Um, so I hope that you will join me on Saturday and we'll continue making these Cora leggings. Thanks for watching and bye for now.